Now, what do all these Instagram posts have in common? These are not real people. These are virtual influencers. On April 23rd, 2016, a company called Brud created their first virtual influencer called Lil Maquela. Since its creation, the account has quickly grown to 2.3 million followers and has publicly announced over $6.1 million of funding. This idea of creating photorealistic models to advertise and promote products has quickly been adopted by other companies and has spread across social media platforms. In order to gain a broader perspective on this topic, we interviewed three people to gain their insights on this topic. What impact do you think virtual influencers will have on society in the future? Just going off of the impact I've already seen them have as of right now, which is a very small impact because they're sort of a new thing. I think that they're definitely still going to continue to impact modern culture, you know, the way people think, talk. You know. Well, if anything, it means a lot of really bad products are going to get used and go out there, you know, because all you have to do is make a CGI person holding that portable phone or really bad product and it's out there, you know. Well, I believe that virtual influencers will become the norm that we see promoting products on social media because there's just so much more that you can do with them as opposed to regular influencers. And we've already seen such a wide variety of companies adapting virtual influencers, so it's only just a matter of time till everyone does it. Is it ethical to use virtual influencers without the audience knowing? Without the audience knowing, I would have to say no. Although then there's also the kind of flip side of that is like, how do you break it to them? But just overall, I don't really think it is. I'm a believer in free thought. You know, I don't, I don't like influencers, social media influencers, really anyone right now. You can look up to someone as an icon and they influence you, but I'd argue that's a different thing because that's not in, that's not intentional. When you're purposefully using someone to influence people, I would argue that's unethical. I think at first it somewhat is, but kind of a slippery slope because it's like the deep fakes or whatever. You can't even tell who's who anymore. The next thing you know, it's like. Your girlfriend on Tinder's a robot. So. This level of ethicalness goes both ways. On one hand, this makes a ton of money, and when I mean when I say a ton of money, I mean we're talking millions of dollars in this industry. But it can be unethical because you're not using real people to promote products. But we've done this ever since the creation of CGI. Like, are car commercials unethical because they don't use real cars? Okay, now we're gonna quiz you. Here's three posts, one of which is a virtual influencer. Can you pick out which one is fake? If you chose this guy, then you're right. But how did our interviewees do? We got Gamer Girl. Uh, her hair's not dyed, she's fake. Uh, wait, no, that's fuck. that's... That's Galusha, no. <laughs> well... Well, it's not the second one. Said that's Andrew Galusha. I, I recognize him. I'm gonna have to go with the first one. Say the first one's real. Okay. Wait, so one of them's fake? Well, to be honest, they all look fake except for the one with Andrew that definitely looks like him. What gives away the virtual influencer as opposed to the real people is something called the uncanny valley, which describes that weird feeling that you get when you look at something that looks real, but it just feels fake, even if you can't tell what it is exactly. Do you think in the future you'll be able to pick out virtual influencers from real ones while browsing on social media? I hope I'll be able to be, but honestly, I, I don't know, because even now I kind of struggled to pick these ones out. It was a deliberated process of elimination, but I don't know, maybe I, I'm not really that good at judging myself in the future. Well, to be honest, they all look fake except for the one with Andrew that definitely looks like him. 
Although virtual influencers have positive aspects to them, corporations can control multiple influencers at any given time, which gives them more power over their audience as opposed to individuals running their singular influencer channel. This power can be used to create bubbles of confirmation bias that can be exploited to gain control over community's opinions. Thankfully, virtual influencers in politics have been kept separate and their influence has been used for their advertised purposes. Meme.Kenichiwa, for example, is revealed to be CGI in the profile and is used for artistic purposes. This integrity of internet activity invalidates the fears of skeptics opposing the existence of virtual influencers. After seeing how convincing many of these influencers can be, can we really trust what we see online?